And coming to you from our studios at City National Arena, the Golden Knights on the cusp of beginning season number seven and of course what will be a huge night at t-mobile arena tomorrow as they raise their stanley cup banner from 2023 dave gosher along with shane knighty with you at nighttime at noon and uh, this is a night chain that a lot of people have been looking forward to we'll, we'll get to that tomorrow night we are going to have um Kelly McCrimmon, Golden Knights general manager, is going to join us here as the show goes on. And um, some good news from practice today. William Carlson was out there as well. But, uh, you know, it seems like they just stopped playing games that mattered <laughs> yesterday. But we do realize it's been, what, uh, three and a half months, I guess, something like that. So close to yeah, four months. Close enough. But it's gone by real fast. But uh, how great this is going to be tomorrow night. With uh, I can't wait to see the whole production, the whole thing, wow. and how the banner goes it, up. It's great and, and unique just in the the sense of every year a team gets to raise that new banner. But you said now you, you add the flair of what the Golden Knights organization uh, has been able to do with the production part. Uh, I think that adds that element of uh, you know suspense to it and an excitement for everybody. But uh, real real great night for, for the team uh, to go up. Uh, I said I've been – Part of this before as a player, it's it, it's special as a group to be able to watch you, the accomplishment you've had. You've had the, the summer of celebration. Uh, we can get into the last kind of part of that, which happened last night, and you were we were part of that. But then get to the ice, the banner goes up, and then I've said it before, I'll say it again, that's kind of the, the final. That's it. That That's the, the sense. Now we move on, and you try to raise uh, – they're on the task of trying to put another one up there uh, next year at the same time. That's uh, That'll be the goal and the mindset of the players as they move forward after that. But to take it all in, I think, is important as a group of what they were able to accomplish. I've heard players say it, Shane, and, and obviously this didn't pertain to you because you retired after you won yeah, the Yeah, mine was a little different. Yeah, so you was like, I'm out of here. I, I took it all in and because a, I knew I was never yeah. – and you know what? It was a cool way to go out because it's the last time I ever wore a jersey, last time I was ever on an NHL ice surface in a jersey, in front of the fans, and, and I knew it. I knew this was yeah. it. And uh, – I was able, and they got ready for a game. I went back and uh, joined future Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer now, uh, Mark Recchi at the time, with uh, some nice wine, red wine in the Stanley <laughs> Cup for the two of us. So it, it was that's what we did in the locker room as they went and played the game. Why wouldn't you? So, um, yeah, but for these guys, a great experience. Yeah, and I guess for guys that have won it, and now the Golden Knights have a few players that have won multiple cups with, you know, you think about Martinez, yeah. Petrangelo, Stevenson. Um, I've heard it said if you get that feeling once, you would give anything to get it again. So I guess now that's the task for this team is, you know, this has been an unbelievable run for them in so many ways, right? To, to win the first Stanley Cup in team history, to do it in six years, you know. Now the motivation to do all of this all over again. I, I And look, Bruce Cassidy's tried to kind of temper that just by saying, look, it's a long way between October, what is it, 11th tomorrow or 10th tomorrow and the middle of June for the finals, right? You get it. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Well, so it's, it's a grind. Yeah. And, and I think the biggest thing they take out of it is they understand it. You learn from it going through the 82 game grind, then the, the four rounds of playoffs to get to your goal. And I think one of the benefits of having the whole group for the most part back is what they learn throughout that. And, and that's what we've heard is it's a veteran group. There's going to be off nights. There's going to be ups and downs to a season. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be whatever you name it. They've gone through it. They understand that now. And it's a matter of staying with it, being able to uh, kind of try to recreate a lot of that because it's not going to go smoothly and it's not going to be easy. There, there's no way to kind of make it look like it's going to be, uh, you know, it's still, boggles my mind that Tampa the way the league is now and the parody that Tampa went to the final three years in a row they won it twice in a row and then still went back like how do you garner that amount of motivation and energy to do it and I think this is a team that has that because of the experience on this team but uh, it's a long way to go so they'll enjoy opening night the raising of the banner and then get set uh, in that first game against Seattle uh, after the the presentation's done to, to get back on track and to their game. I want to come back to tomorrow night in a second. But before that, we have breaking news. We, I wish we had, like, yeah. the breaking news, like the, like the yeah. sounder. We don't have that. Um, so the Golden Knights, you mentioned, Shane, they come back virtually intact 
five players gone from last year. One of those players wore an A on his jersey. That was Riley Smith, right? So now the Golden Knights this season, um, we can tell you right now, here's how it's going to go. Of course, you got Mark Stone as a captain. Alex Petrangelo will wear an A every game. And they will rotate the A home and row. Not sure which one's going to be which just yet. Yeah. Jack Eichel and William Carlson. So two really good candidates yeah. there to uh, to fill the, that void. A very well deserved for both of them. And I'm sure they had a lot of candidates that uh, could because this team, you know, the leadership goes beyond just wearing a letter with, without question at this team. And uh, But two guys, Jack Eichel, who was a former captain in the National Hockey League and for me, William Carlson, certainly deserving. Uh, you know, he's a guy that each and every night, when you think of the word consistency, consistent game, uh, low, you know, a, what a coach would call, you know, a player that needs nothing. You just, you know what to expect out of him each and every night on both sides of the puck. So for him, he's been here since day one, uh, a great honor for him to wear that as well. And uh, said they've got a tremendous leadership group and, uh, the guys with the letters, very deserving, and uh, there's others around to support. So there you go. Mark Stone, uh, the captain, of course, Alex Petrangelo, has an A all year, and they'll rotate the other A between Jack Eichel and William Carlson. Um, I wanted to come back to tomorrow night. And so they last night, the ring ceremony, which we'll get into that as well. But so they've got this unbelievable ceremony. Just so you know, if you're going to the game tomorrow, they're probably not going to drop the puck until about 8, 10, 8, 12 in yeah. that neighborhood. It's going to take a while. Um, what is it like, do you think, for them, Shane? So they go through all of this, this whole run. <clears throat> that banner goes up tomorrow night. And then you've got to, <laughs> then you've got to focus on trying to beat Seattle. How do they do that? Well, I think that, that every home opener, there there's built-in energy, excitement to start the regular season. I think it's just, you know, it's added to it with the ceremony they're going to have and the raising of the banner. But uh, I think this team recognizes, uh, you know, getting to a game. And if, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the preseason too as well. You know, their starts has maybe been the issue. And I'm certainly, I'm positive that it's been addressed by the coaching staff and Bruce Cassidy that they need to start better. But they've gotten to their game, particularly when they had their full, close to their full lineup in the last two preseason games. So, you know, as players, yeah, there, the, the, there's adrenaline. You're ready to go. You're ready to start this regular season. I think it just adds to it that they're going to have this special ceremony that they're all looking forward to. They're going to take it in. And then I think the biggest thing is you're, you're standing around. Like a normal game, you warm up, you come out, it's the anthem, you're ready to go. There's going to be a bit of a delay. So you will watch how they start this game. But got to remember, Seattle's just going to be sitting there too. They, they have to yeah, wait for all yeah. this to happen before they can get on the ice. So it may take a few, uh, you know, a few shifts, maybe five, five minutes into the game for both teams to really get their legs under them. But certainly they have that advantage too because I uh, can imagine the crowd's going to be ready to go. And oh, one thing we know, the fortress gets rocking. You can feed off that as a player, and uh, I think guys will be excited here to get this next season started. You think about the last two – I don't want to count the preseason in this, but the last two games that mattered, you had game five of the Stanley <laughs> Cup final and then the opener tomorrow night. The crowd, the, the people, they jammed in there for game five. And talk about if that, that was the hottest ticket, we'll, we'll say, it, in the history of the yeah. team tomorrow night would be the same. And it's time. an extension of the celebration because right. there's still right. something attached to it. So, you know, you, you see the cup paraded around in the, in the previous game. Certainly everybody's celebrating. This is going to, you know, it's not the same. But it's, as I said, it's kind of that the last page of the book here for that, you know, Stanley Cup season that everybody's going to have a chance to celebrate that, celebrate what happened. And then hopefully they, on top of that, uh, there's a victory that you yeah. can enjoy that first victory of the new season. Yeah, then the grind begins, right? Yeah. It's 82 games plus uh, playoffs, they hope. You know, Bruce Cassidy talks a lot about it. And he's been... He's been very vocal about it. I think it's hilarious that he did the back-to-back the -back chant at the Why parade. Not? Why wouldn't you? I mean, everyone in this league is after the same thing, and they're so hesitant to actually talk about it out in the open. But doesn't it fit the Golden Knights? Yeah, the, like the, the, the cup and six? Right, that, that, right. That was said a long time ago. Yep. And you know what? What's, yep. what's wrong with uh, setting those – you know, unreal expectations, if you want to call them that, and then it gives you something to drive for. So that's kind of been, uh, it's no surprise with this organization. That's why everybody around the league loves them. That seemed like a bit of a stretch <laughs> when I first heard it. It's like, real? A cup and six? Well, he, 
He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Obviously he knows what he's talking about. He's just off on playoffs. Yeah. The playoffs in three? I don't know. How about the, I how about the it. final in one and then cup yeah, in six? Yeah, that would have been better. You that really want really to be a psychic. That would have been something else. Um, so the Golden Knights will get it going tomorrow night against the Seattle Kraken. Of course, uh, the last two teams to uh, enter into the National Hockey League. The, the Golden Knights go through the preseason chain. And, um, you know, look, the first couple of games are special, and we did them on the TV sets. Uh, they looked like a team that was playing the first couple of preseason games. It yeah. didn't have not even close to what you would call a veteran lineup. Nobody really does, especially that early in the preseason, but especially a team coming off winning a Stanley Cup. You made the point on the show on uh, Saturday in L.A. that, you know, you're kind of waiting for them to get to their game in the preseason, and in the third period of that, yeah. that game, they did. I, yeah, even, even the game at home against Colorado, yeah. they kind of got to it in the back half. Didn't like the starts in either of them. Well, the one at Colorado, and Bruce Cassidy said they had five penalties by 8 o'clock. <laughs> it was, so, so it's hard to play. And, and you got to understand, those first games, guys train, they're in great shape, but when you're playing, you're, you're, you're playing three on three, four on five, you're playing simulated games on the ice, that, that, that doesn't equate to what an NHL game is like when you involve the hitting and you bring the structure in, the defensive systems, all that. That takes a little while to get a handle on that back up to game pace, as we call it. So, and then you've got different guys in. You're not building chemistry. It's an evaluation for, you know, the organization, management, the scouts to, to look at everything. And then you get down to the lineup. Everybody's now had a taste of it. They've kind of got uh, a little more comfort. And, and as you mentioned, I was excited to see that third period against L.A. Because that is the ultimate goal when you get to your lineup to watch the progression of how the team – and, and you, want it, you want the progression to go up. Not, not like this. And for the Golden Knights, you, you want to take something positive about it. And that third period was really good. We've talked about the power play, how it's needed to improve this year with pace. I thought that was their best game with it, uh, yeah. was against L.A. So a lot of positives to take out, certainly that third period, and uh, hopefully they just build upon it here as they get set for the regular season. Jack Eichel, five points. Yeah, that was bad. So four points. <laughs> yeah, they were uh, more than, than ready to go. It's nighttime at noon here with Dave and Shane. And a quick reminder for you, if you want to get the inside scoop on the Golden Knights 2023 Stanley Cup run, purchase It Hurts to Win, the official inside story of the 2023 Stanley Cup champion Golden Knights. Get it online or at any of the team stores written by members of the Golden Knights organization, including chairman and owner Bill Foley, president of hockey operations, George McPhee, and general manager Kelly McCrimmon, along with select players. It Hurts to Win includes on-ice accomplishments, behind-the-scenes storytelling, anecdotes, and vignettes. They'll all be shared for the first time. It Hurts to Win is available now for purchase in-store and online uh, we will roll along here with nighttime at noon the golden knights had their ring ceremony last night we'll get into those they're pretty nice you were there i was there and uh talk about an impressive piece of jewelry we'll run down all of that and uh gm kelly mccrimmon expected to join us right around 12 30 on the eve of the new season and on the eve of the cup banner being raised to the rafters at the fortress we'll have more after this nighttime at noon on fox sports las vegas
Great to have you with us here at nighttime at noon on your radio home for the Golden Knights, Fox Sports Las Vegas. And great to have you with us as well on all of our social media channels. Quick reminder for you fans, you can watch your Vegas Golden Knights this season with Nighttime Plus. Download Nighttime Plus today on your smartphone, tablet, computer, or on your TV to watch the 2023 Stanley Cup champions live. And for less than a dollar a game, Nighttime Plus delivers all locally televised games on Scripps Sports as well as bonus content created throughout the season. Download the app today, and you can tune in all season long. Of course, happy to have uh, Script Sports, our great new TV partner. And uh, then Nighttime Plus will be a great home uh, for if you want to do it uh, on the apps, that's the way to do it. The apps. The apps, they'll have everything there for you uh, all season long. So um, the Golden Knights last night had a beautiful ceremony at the win. Um, to unveil their Stanley Cup rings. And I was honored to, to be just a small part of it. They asked me to just kind of mm-hmm. MC it and uh, run the show a little bit. And uh, what a what a piece of jewelry this yeah. is, Shane. It, it's it, it, to no surprise. No. They started the, the design on this literally as the guys were hoisting the Stanley Cup. It, beca- mean, it kind of becomes the next thing. You don't know, the yeah. cup is the thing, yeah. but the, the, the ring is you take forever. And I think, you know, that's something – and I want to, this is where I should be asking you because you were there, uh, you know, I'm interested, you know, when the guys get their first look and I know there's, you know, social media and now you get to see it. I've, yeah. I've been to two ring ceremonies as a player. One was fun. One wasn't so much. I was telling you that story when I, yeah. I joined Anaheim right after they won the cup. I was one of three guys that got to sit there and watch everybody else open up because <laughs> we we're the new players on the team and we, we weren't there the previous year. So that one was, it was still good to see the excitement, but to, to see guys. And I remember when, you know, we did it in Boston, and, uh, you know, we saw a glimpse of that. For you, you got to announce for them to yeah. open. The, okay, oh, I think you, you did the countdown one, look yeah. at your rings, and uh, did you take that in and see, you know, yeah. the reaction, the, the initial look on their, response? The look on their faces, right? Because yeah. they don't know. It's funny. I ran into it because Mark Stone gave a yeah. speech, and uh, I ran into him before I introduced him, and I said, all right, have you seen the finished product? And he said, no. He goes, I wanted to be relatively surprised, too. He said, the last I saw of it was like in – july and there were still a lot of different mock-ups of what they wanted the ring to to look like so i just whenever you count it down kind of three two one and then like jack eichel's table was kind of jack eichel alec martinez mark stone uh, i'm kind of forgetting who else but that was kind of the table right in front of me like to see the look on their face like this is the most unbelievable thing that ever. Yeah, seen. I think that that's great. That it's good. Was, it's good we're in a digital age now where you yeah, can capture a lot of. That. I yeah. saw the Eichel reaction. I saw the Carlson. Like yeah. just like uh, Jack. You know, Jack was so excited. He you know, he used a, yeah, a you, swear word. In pro- I would have too. Um, <laughs> Carlson kissing it. Yeah. and then you know, then they all do the same thing, right? You got the phone. You're going to take pictures yeah. of it. Um, it. What's amazing to me about it, Shane, and there's so many parts of this ring, but. The top of it comes off, yeah. which I've never seen. Well, and, and you, you can you're going to go through all this. I've yeah. had the opportunity to look at all the pictures, and, yeah. and it's it's not going to do justice as no. to seeing it in real life, which no. you've fortunately done. But yeah, yeah, I think they did a tremendous job capturing. I love all the details. You know, every team's different. What they want to put in there to remember and kind of. You know, as you carry on, and I think the Golden Knights have just really set the mark like on, the, on what to do. The little thing of uh, – there's so many little things, but when the top of the ring – so the, your significant other last night also got a pendant. They get a pendant, Right. Yeah. But the top of the ring also would come off, yeah. and you could wear that as a pendant if you'd like as well. So you take the top of the ring off. On the underside, underside of that, it says it's nighttime. Because you're then you're looking down into what is T-Mobile Arena. It's crazy. It's unbelievable that they would think of this, and they have marked on the ice at T-Mobile the nine spots on the ice where the nine goals came from in Game Five of the Cup Final. So they thought of that. Um, they have 32 diamonds around the inner bezel of the mm-hmm. ring to signify the 32 teams in the NHL. Where the cup is, and you remember the, uh, and we're showing this on our yeah. social media channels, John, the mock-up of Jonathan Marchessault's ring. They're just unbelievable. 12 carats. Um, they, they also did, you'd remember this, Shane, from the, from the Bruins ring. There were six rows of diamonds yeah. on the Stanley Cup for the Bruins ring because it was their sixth cup. For this ring, it's because they won it in the sixth Six, year, yeah. and they have six diamonds as well also signifying around the cup their sixth yeah. season 
Bill Foley, Bill Foley's Oli's advance on one side of the yeah. ring, Vegas Born on the other side. Bill Foley's cup and six inscribed on the inside of the ring, the underside, if you will. Um, the Vegas skyline. That's the one I love. The skyline, Around the, the whole way they that, that, that is <laughs> oh crazy. Gosh. So when I saw that, I was, you know, and truth be told, we had seen, um, we were at an event a couple of months ago, and we had seen what it, it but yeah, I've seen I think up. even since then, I know since oh, then, it's, it's changed. The details. So uh, just an unbelievable um, piece of jewelry. Jason was there from Jason of Beverly Hills because that was the company that designed this ring. Uh, Jason Arashiman was there with uh, his wife and a, and a couple of colleagues, and he went up and described just how all this, this ring was put together. But, uh, you know, 16 stars around the inner bezel representing that, you know, each of the 16 playoff victories. Yeah. They've got 67 white diamonds uh, around the, the, the helmet of the ring to honor. They won 67 games total, yeah. 51 in the regular year, 16 in the playoffs. Um, the work and the detail that when they have this – your ring in Boston would have this. The scores of each series yep. on one side of the ring. So it would have been 4-1, 4-2, 4-2, 4-1. So they've got those as well. So, uh, And there will be opportunities, uh, we're told, and they're going to announce this at some point, of um, you know replica rings and how yep. fans can also get in uh, on the fun. But just to see everybody there and and you know that's kind of the next to last thing right that's what we say yeah, tomorrow's kind of, the final chapter yeah, they, they, you you know, know? they get a little more time with the cup they get their rings great dinner and celebrate that it's usually done so i recall you know close to it right. you know a day or two before that uh banner raising the first game of the season then that happens then it's as i said then it's it's the move on is is the next part but uh well deserved for the, for these guys and as you said to to see those initial expressions uh Phones out, everything ready, yeah. uh, and to share it with their teammates. You know, like I'm looking again at the Jonathan Marcheseau sample. So you've got his name on one side of the ring, his number 81 in all diamonds. Yeah. Um, some members of our of our front office on the business side got their rings last night. So where the number would be in place of that would be the the uh, what is it the the shield like the, yeah. the the Vegas shield right that. That would be on those rings, so it was great to see some of our colleagues get their rings. Last so night. much input and time put oh. into the detail, and I'm sure I'm sure they've they, you know you probably start out with all these ideas, you narrow them down, then you pick a few more up, and, yeah. and just eventually, as I said, it, it's a it's a long process, a lot of people's input to get to this point but uh to all those who did it uh seeing uh, seeing the final result at least not as good as dave has seen them but from my <laughs> my standpoint uh certainly uh, hats off a standing ovation for the job they've done unbelievable and, and you know the funny part of it all is shane and there's so much time and effort and focus put into this and money right and <laughs> bill foley incredibly yeah. generous right to um you know to to get all these rings made and and uh it, and then it's just the way it is. And it, 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 when you do see it in person, there's no way you could ever wear it on a regular basis, right? Day to day, you you wouldn't be able to. You they, know, they've been like that for a while. They a are, long time. They get bigger every. They get larger every yeah. year. There used to be a time, you know. I, I think back to the the you know the only one that either of us have had experience with is is the ring for the yeah. Boston Bruins in 2011. And um, I've got to find it first. I, I, I think it's in a safe at the house. I'm pretty sure it's, it. I'm pretty sure it's in a safe. Usually it's moved around. Yeah. But anyway, um, I think of that ring, and then I had a good friend of mine uh, that does the New England Patriots games back when the Patriots were good, and they were winning Super Bowls. Yeah. And he got a Patriots Super Bowl ring. I couldn't tell you which one, but in that run of, you know, the next of the three yeah. they won. He, he got all three, but I can't remember which ring it was. So I did an event for him, and we each kind of brought our rings. And this would have been probably in 2015 or something like that. And so we're talking four years after the Bruins. And his Super Bowl ring, it dwarfed yeah. the Stanley Cup ring from the Bruins. This ring last night is, I, I don't think I've seen, well, I, I'm not a. You can put some of those old rings in, in, rings in where you take it off, where you take the top much. off, you can put the old yeah. rings inside. The other thing that's great, and you remember this about uh, in Boston, when you opened the box of the ring, yeah. the, it lit up like poltergeist, right? And there's spun around, it right? spins around. I think Jack Eichel said, how do I stop it? <laughs> he wanted to get it. That was great. <laughs> so great. Just a great night and uh, so well done by so many people. Uh, the championship ring for the Golden Knights unveiled last night. The players, the trainers, the coaches, the equipment guys, um, you know, the guys that, 
You know, Man. I said at some point last night, Shane, look, it, it's, the, it's the guys that – that bled and broke bones and made every sacrifice to win the Stanley Cup, and they got their ring last night, and so well deserved. So, um, and the final chapter tomorrow night, and uh, of course uh, the Golden Knights will raise their Stanley Cup banner. The, the guys on the radio will have it all covered for you. Soup yeah. to nuts. We'll have a special one-hour pregame show on Script Sports from six to seven tomorrow night as well. So, uh, nighttime at noon here from our studios in downtown. Summerlin, as we said, uh, still lots to cover. The Golden Knights just finished up practice here not long ago. There was good news at practice. Number 71 was on the ice, so that was good to see, to say the least. And as we say, we are expected to be joined by Golden Knights General Manager Kelly McCrimmon coming up here shortly as well. We'll step aside and have more after this on Fox Sports Las Vegas. Glad you could uh, join us here on this Monday. Of course, October the 9th, Golden Knights will begin Season 7, and they will begin defense of their Stanley Cup championship coming up tomorrow night. They'll take on the Seattle Kraken of the Fortress, and, of course, before that, the raising of their Stanley Cup banner. Quick reminder for you, the Foley Food and Wine Society was created to celebrate three of Bill and Carol Foley's greatest passions, world-class wines, exceptional cuisine, and magnificent travel destinations. Members of the society will have access to the entire portfolio of properties around the world and have the exclusive opportunity to join like-minded individuals who seek to experience the finer things in life. Join for free today. Check it out at foleyfoodandwinesociety.com. Dave Gosher, Shane Knighty with you as the Golden Knights get ready to begin their new season tomorrow and put the finishing touches on their uh, Stanley Cup championship back on uh, June the 13th. 
we mentioned Shane um, Golden Knights at practice today, and yeah. um, good to see William Carlson back out there, right? He'd only played in one exhibition game and um, had been sidelined with yeah. whatever the issue was, but uh, it was good to see number 71 back in his normal spot. It certainly was. You know what he brings to this lineup and, and the depth he adds at center when you plug him in there and he falls behind, you know, you got Eichel, Stevenson, then Carlson, then, then Nick Waugh. It's, it's, it's a big strength of this team. And, uh, you know, Bruce Cassidy kind of, you try to read between not too much, but what he talked about it didn't seem like it was serious. It's more just precautionary, keeping Carlson. And, and when I think of a player, and we talked about him earlier, just, he doesn't need a lot of time to get up to speed. He, you know, yeah. consistent to his game. He had the one preseason game. Um, wanted to make sure he's healthy and all set uh, for that home opener, and it, it looks like that's the case. And uh, he'll be centering that third line with uh, you know Paul Cotter and Amadios, who they had on practice today. And, uh, that'll move Howden back up with Stone and Stevenson where he finished in playoffs and, you know, really took off. Five goals, ten points in playoffs, playing along those guys. A big role. He, he's a good four-checker. The way the lines are structured, uh, they like to have, you know, kind of the Barbashev with Eichel and Marshall, that guy that they, they send in first in the four-check. I would say Howden's that piece with uh, with Stone and Stevenson. So, you know, Carlson allows them to, you know, you, you put him back in, all of a sudden everybody just falls in and the depth – up front is there. You know, we talked a lot during our, our preseason uh, telecasts. There really wasn't much room here. I mean, let's face no. it. You're trying to fill that left wing on, on William Carlson's line, and you're going to carry an extra forward. So the way it shook out today, you just ran down the line. So you've got two extra forwards right now in Pavel Dorfiev and Max Comtois. We'll see what they, what ends up happening yeah. with Comtois is here on a tryout. And then on defense, there, there were – Initially, no openings, but we did say the one wild card always in all of this is injuries. And you've got Zach Whitecloud out. Uh, the team announced the other day week to week had surgery for an upper body injury. Alec Martinez out as well. He has not skated. So, uh, and the the odd man out, the extra defenseman now would be in terms of the healthy ones, Caden Korzak. Yeah. So just like that, you've got two of your top six defensemen that aren't going to play. We know it's going to be a while for White Cloud. We'll see what the situation is with Martinez. But So your third defense pair goes from Haig and White Cloud to Hutton and Pahal, and you move up Haig to play with Petrangelo. And you think of the defensive depth, and I think we we started out about trying to defend the long season and learning from the past. And you go to last year, all the different defensemen that came in that played. Ben Hutton's been here for a while. Pahal got games last year. Korzak got games. So you know, now it's not as unfamiliar, those guys coming in. And I think it was important for Hutton and Pahal to have those last two games together as they build their chemistry together as a pairing on the blue line. And, uh, you know, every team goes through it. You you, you need uh, different people to step up. You need that depth at every position. And I think at the defense, it, it's been a it's been a strength here for the Golden Knights. They have that ability. And for Braden Hall, it's a, it's a huge opportunity. And Ben Hutton, who, you know, to stay in the lineup. I think, he, you know, he's tremendous teammate his ability to come in and out and, and play when they need him now he can come in start the season the two of those guys and and get the job done he has handled that you know we talked about him a lot last year Shane and I, I guess again this year in the preseason Ben Hutton he has handled that role as about good as, as good as, yeah and I you know I looked it up the other day because I you know over the passage of time you kind of how long did he go without playing there was one stretch he missed a month and a half there's another stretch he missed two months the regular season's only six months and great attitude every day, came in, did his work. And, you know, and I think he would say, and you could speak to this, that that plays a large role that when your time does come, you're ready as opposed to moping around that you're not playing and, you know, trying to, you know, want to drag people down with it. And noticed by the rest of the yeah. group. They understand right. that's not easy for anyone. And, and the respect they have for a guy like Ben Hutton, his ability to stay sharp through those lengthy off times to, to and, and not drag the team down, to keep a positive attitude, be a positive influence around the room, be a popular guy. Uh, the, that's where the role sometimes, you know, goes beyond the ice being, we talked about leaders. You know, he, he's a leader in his own way in the way he handles himself and, and how he's respected by his teammates. So, yeah, I, just a, a tremendous asset to have when you have a guy like that. Uh, it, it's great for the team, great for, for the organization. And, uh, yeah, him and Braden Pahal, I think, uh, you know, certainly deserving of that start and being ready to go here tonight or Nick, tomorrow night. Yeah. Tonight. The game's no, there's tomorrow. nothing tonight. Uh, you can go down there tonight, Shane. You're I, not going to see anything. Well, well you I'd might. be there early. <laughs> Get down there. Beat the traffic. 
<laughs> yes, I'm sure there will be because you know got all the festivities, yeah. the gold carpet again tomorrow, so as they do each and every year. Yeah. So uh, uh, the people want to know because you always come up with a fancy costume for oh, the home geez. opener. Have you finished? Is it is it a finished product? It is not, unfortunately. No. There's going to be a bit of a scramble by Shane here this afternoon. <laughs> to, uh, I, I've got to find a pair of kicks to go with it. So uh, I'm surprised somebody of your stature would. Well, I, I have finished. stuff, but I'm not not entirely pleased. I get a little picky. I know you're very, you are very. You know, it may not be liked things. by everybody, but uh, you try to be unique every year. Yeah, that's great. So well, not you. you. I'm I, sure you got some five year old suit. Yeah, you got to do. up it a bit. I might uh, get a new shirt today. Oh, that's exciting. Maybe a tie. Yeah, it's a big day. Big day big in day. the Dave Dave's world. Uh, <laughs> I think I've got my costume figured out for tomorrow. I, I don't go as uh, elaborate as you, which is. Uh, uh, which is fine. That's, that's your deal. But I think I've got something that'll look moderately decent. I'm that's sure all. That's all we're sure shooting for here. Yeah, don't miss all that tomorrow. You've right? evolved since year one. Let's just say that. When I had three suits. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the days of radio, I could have been up there in a sweatsuit. Nobody would have known the difference. Uh, we mentioned earlier uh, the Golden Knights announcing uh, earlier today uh, that um, William Carlson and Jack Eichel will share the A's this year. You'll have Mark Stone, obviously captain, Alex Petrangelo with an A uh, the entire season. William Carlson with the A at home and Jack Eichel on the road. So that's how they will, um, that's how they will divvy that up. Uh, this season, we mentioned the Golden Knights. Uh, their their lineup, at least up front right now, pretty much solidified. Um, looks like Paul Cotter, at least for now, will be that left wing on William Carlson's yeah. line. Shane, you know that's something that Bruce Cassidy touched on earlier in camp. That you know this could be something that is continuing to be uh, evaluated throughout the first month, six weeks of the season, because you've got Pavel Dorfiev right now who. Yeah really came on strong in that late stretch last season, scored seven goals in 10 games. You know what he's capable of when, when he gets hot. But this could be something, yeah. just because it's like this tomorrow, who knows? It might not look like that next week or by the end of the month. And, and a lot of that's on, you know, the opportunity those guys get when they're in the lineup. That's what I love about that. That's the internal competition that drives the team to be better is when you have guys competing for spots in season, right? You, you want to stay in the lineup? Uh, that's part of be, being a professional athlete is taking hold of that opportunity when you get it. And said Paul Cotter had a real, you know, strong finish to camp. He had that great play in the Colorado game that led to his game-winning goal. And, and I think, you know, that's kind of what Bruce Cassidy wants of him. He made a great play on that kind of coming back, separated the man from the puck, a good, hard, solid check. He's a, he's a big, strong guy. And get the puck to those other two guys, uh, it was Stone and Stevenson at the time, but you know now Carlson Amadio who who'd built something together and Pavel Dorofiev. I thought you know great camp. He's a guy that does a lot of good things in traffic. Goes to the net. Saw he can score. Uh, you know he had those seven goals. He was in ten games last yeah. year. So certainly, um, and that's good. Um, but uh, as of now, from what they did today, it looks like Paul Cotter is going to have that first opportunity um, tomorrow. And uh, you know if I'm him, he's doing everything he can to make sure he. He stays alongside uh, Carlson and Amadio as long as he can. I was talking uh, the other day, Shane, with Alex Petrangelo because I just I, I wanted to get a sense of, you know, we mentioned earlier there's a few guys in that locker room that have gone through yeah. this before. And that next season early after you win a Stanley Cup, what's that like from an emotional standpoint to try to get over the hump of, look, we just played these games at the highest level possible <laughs> in June. Now, no disrespect to anybody, but we're playing a game on a random Wednesday in late October against whoever. Um, and what he had mentioned to me was when the Blues won it in 2019, that next year, it ended up being stopped by COVID yeah. in March, obviously, of 2020. That next year, they were in first place the whole year. And he said what he thinks the Golden Knights will benefit from here is their depth. They can rely on their depth. They, they, you know, we've touched, they play everybody. Yeah. It's not like they're a top heavy team like some others. They're able to get contributions up and down, the, you know, their forward ranks. Or yeah, it doesn't have to back. be one line. Yeah. It and he's somebody thought, different each and every night. Yeah. He just thought that A, it's a veteran group. B, the depth they have might allow them to avoid. I mean, they're going to have dips and lulls in their season. But he thought that. And he said the other, the other funny part was he said, look, Nobody liked us before we won the Stanley Cup. They certainly <laughs> don't like us now, but you know that's extra, yeah, extra it's, motivation it's a as well. You're as talking on the, along the lines of you know the Stanley Cup winner, usually everybody that's the measuring stick. You yeah, have a bit of a target that yeah. next year. Everybody wants to play you hard, but yeah, for that sake, yeah, everybody's always played Vegas hard uh, yeah. for that reason. Um, so yeah, they're used to it. They're used to getting other teams' best. Uh, I think you know when you come to, t to the Fortress T-Mobile. 
certainly there there's a home advantage because the energy. But you know, coming in as, as an opposer, if I'm playing in Arizona in Mullet Arena, and you get a chance to play on the road in front of a lot more fans, sure. there, there there's an excitement there. So you know, teams come in ready to go and. I think the Golodites, uh, you know, they've established that hey, we've got to be ready each and every night because we're going to see, we're going to see close to the very best from every team coming into this building. Bruce Cassidy talked about at one point last week that, look, they they had a very short summer for a great reason. Um, would they look for pockets in the schedule to let them maybe decompress a little bit more than you normally would in a season? Yeah. You get into January and February. And, you know, there are some spots where it's built in for you, the All-Star break, yeah. you know, in their bye week. But, you know, where we're maybe you – and he said maybe you listen to the players. Do you trust the players to say, look, uh, we need, you know, do we not practice tomorrow just for the sake of argument, whatever the situation might be. And I, I, I would find it interesting just how they kind of navigate that because it is, you know, you live that it is yeah. such a long year. Well, and I don't th- and, and we, we touched on this on the broadcast in, in the last preseason game, in my opinion, that they've got a really light October. Like November's yeah. bananas. Uh, yes. On the road, uh, there's, there's a few things going on in Vegas in that month, I believe. <laughs> um, but. You know, so, so and sometimes it's good to get away when you when you're busy like that. You're with the guys, you're enjoying everything. But uh, I think October is a month to take advantage. Hopefully that they come out and play well. You know, you'd certainly love to see a, another 13 and two start in the first 15 games. I don't know, if you can keep it to that to that point, but certainly come out ready to go. Uh, you know, it starts uh, it starts on the ice tomorrow, but uh, October there's a, there's a lot of room for them to manage it early on. You know, certainly, uh, and, and it'll be for Bruce Cassidy, who's talked about what's he going to see from his team, you know, and we hear the word Stanley Cup hangover. I don't know if that's a thing, but if, if there's a bit off, then, okay, October you have time for practice to, to maybe, you know, hammer home those details, work on it there if that's the case, or if they have a good start, you can rest early. So there's a little flexibility there in the schedule with what uh, October brings here for the Golden Knights. And to your point earlier, I mean, the, the most recent example would be Tampa. Yeah. And the Lightning handled it fine, right? Back-to-back cups, go to no the problem. final the third year in a row. So not to say it'll be easy, but uh, the Golden Knights will take step number one in all of that coming up tomorrow night at the Fortress. Dave and Shane with you on nighttime at noon. And we'd love you to watch uh, the Golden Knights games uh, again this season on the TV set. You can watch them for free, of course, now. Scripps Sports is bringing all locally broadcasted games to fans for free. With the TV. <laughs> Golden Knights on Script Sports through Vegas 34. Visit NHL.com slash Vegas Golden Knights for more information about Script Sports and the television broadcasts this season. Quick note, uh, as you'd imagine, a game of this magnitude tomorrow. We will not have it. ESPN will we'll have the festivities. Uh, we'll have an hour-long pregame show from 6 to 7. It's going to be actually a Golden Knights finish a triple header to start uh, the, the NHL season tomorrow night. It'll be the third of the three games. So we'll step aside here nighttime at noon. So we're still uh, holding. Hopefully, uh, Kelly McCrimmon's able to join us here. Of course, it's a busy day. He's got a lot more going on than us. Joining us two yeah. schmucks. I understand that. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if we have Kelly uh, strolling in the studio. If not, we'll uh, cover some other things on Fox Sports Las Vegas.
One final segment here for you on Nighttime at Noon with uh, Dave Gosher and Shane Knighty, of course, looking ahead to yet another huge night in the history of this franchise. Tomorrow with the Golden Knights will begin season number seven, and they'll do it by raising the Stanley Cup banner at T-Mobile Arena before that. Great festivities outside before the game. Get there early. Give yourself enough time if you can. Uh, gold carpet starts at 3.30. It's Vegas. You could get down there at 10 and there's stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, but, get, but yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plan your whole day. Get three square meals down there if you'd like. But it'll be uh, just a fantastic night. Um, the uh, final cap, the uh, final chapter of this team winning the Stanley Cup. We mentioned, Shane, a couple of uh, games before that. So um, the Tampa Bay Lightning at home, they'll take on Nashville. That's uh, the first game of the triple header. That's at 5.30 Eastern, so 2.30 out here. It's, well a, str- it's a strange, it's a I strange know, matchup. It's a strange, for first and it's a strange time. time. But 5.30 Eastern, that'll be whatever, 2.30 where we live. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Chicago Blackhawks, of course, uh, Connor Bernard. And uh, is just a, supposed to be just a phenomenal prospect, and I'm on overall pick. Yeah, against his idol. Against Sidney Crosby and the Penguins. That's game two. Well, that one I can see. That's, that's yeah. going to draw some eyes. Everybody's waiting to see what Connor Bernard can do. It's kind of, you know. Since the other Connor came in the league, I, you know, you always there's always anticipation of these high picks, but uh, he, he's got he's gotten a little bit more, and it kind of compares to when McDavid came in the league. So everybody excited to see what Connor Bedard can do, and of course, Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, you know, Sidney Crosby still still uh, hasn't slowed down, coming off a terrific season, yeah, uh, just consistent uh, Hall of Famer, what he's done in his career. You've got a couple of teams there, right? So. The Blackhawks, who for a long time were really kind of the gold standard, right? You think about their three cups in six years. Um, you know, then they've fallen off in a lot of different ways over the last couple of years. Um, but they get Connor Bernard as the first overall pick. You get the Penguins, who had not missed the playoffs since Crosby's rookie year and missed it last year. A lot of talk about what direction they were going to go. They go out and make one of the biggest moves in the offseason, yeah. right, in getting Eric Carlson from San Jose. And we'll see him tomorrow night make his Penguins team. And with their same three core there, uh, of Malkin and Latang, Crosby, yeah. who have been around for forever for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and then yet adding a piece in, in Eric Carlson. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the, the Penguins can do this year. And uh, then, then the to me, the highlight game, of course, is yeah. – uh, We'll follow up the Golden Knights and the Kraken. And against, you know, a Seattle team that, full credit, last year knock off Colorado in the first round. They win game seven on the road before coming up short uh, in round two against Dallas, Dallas. if I remember but correctly. But gave a run. Like, yeah, six games. Am I right on that? Yeah, and I said this yeah. last year. Like, Seattle reminded me of year one Golden Knights. Just nothing. Played on in-your-face, aggressive style. They they could score. You know, McCann led them in scoring for a goal year, but just – by committee they were able to do it so we'll see if they can you know was it uh, one of those overachieving years by seattle uh, or is are they the real deal and are going to improve upon that we'll see uh, this season so you know another one of those many storylines coming into a, a new nhl season two big contracts handed out over the last couple of days one just right over the last few minutes winnipeg jets lock up both mark shifley and connor hellebuck Identical seven-year deals worth fifty-nine and a half well, million bucks. So they had bought out Blake Wheeler in the offseason. Of course, the um, Jets get knocked out in the first round by the Golden Knights in the playoffs last year. They move on from Wheeler, and I think there's probably a lot of question: what direction well, are there, they there's heading? There's talk here, of right? trading both those guys. Yes, not happening. Seven-year deals for both Hellebuck and Shifley. Identical money well, to theoretically stay there for for a long time. And the other deal we would. Uh, just kind of mention quickly here, Buffalo Sabres and uh, Rasmus Dahlin, eight-year deal worth uh, eighty-eight million. So, uh, handing out some that's pretty, a lot. That one shot handing me, out some but, pretty good uh, money in Buffalo. I, I, I'm a little surprised by that, but hey, yeah, it's not my money. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully, it's not your money. Is right. We've got a couple of minutes to go, and we're happy to be joined here for our last few minutes by Golden Knights General Manager Kelly McCrim. And Kelly, we know you, it's a busy day, the day before the season. We're glad you could join us two schmucks. We, uh, we, we appreciate it. I've got to ask you, the ring dinner last night, you open up that box, and your first reaction and thought is what? Can you uh, say probably, it on the radio? Well, probably in a word, just wow. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I'd been part of the process all through the – uh, off season, so I had a good idea, you know, just from my computer screen, you know, what it was going to look like. But when you actually 
uh, have it in your hand, just uh, the impress how impressive it is, the, the weight of it and everything else. It's uh, pretty incredible. And then just, you know, the reaction of the, yeah, that's the, the guys best. and their wives was really neat. Yeah. Well, and you said, so you've done, you, Dave was saying there's kind of three things. You get your day with the cup, yep. you get your ring. There's one left. Yep. How long do you enjoy that before you're like, okay, you get back into evaluation mode? Because it happens quickly tomorrow. Probably about 7.35 <laughs> uh, tomorrow night. I uh, I hope that uh, we've had a lot going on. Uh, of course, the guys got the uh, the football game tonight where they'll oh, be recognized. Right. So uh, it's been a busy stretch. But uh, such good feelings uh, that go along with it when, uh, you know, Dave, you were there when they show the – a couple of videos that they did last night. It's uh, it's emotional watching yeah. uh, you know the journey that the guys uh, traveled. Uh, you know I uh, you know worry a little bit. Can we sort of get dialed back in for puck drop? But uh, at the same time, um, you know Mark Stone said it best last night. This is an easy team to be captain of because there's so many leaders, and I think that uh, uh, they'll uh, they'll be able to. Uh, be prepared and ready to go for what should be a real exciting start to uh, to a new season. I loved your comment, Kelly, early in camp, where you said, "Look, when you go through a, a short summer and win, uh, yep. you know you'd, you'd take that short summer any any day of the week. If you lose, it's a different feeling." Your team coming off winning it, what has been your assessment of camp? What have you seen so far going into a new season tomorrow? Um, I think the energy has been really good. I know Bruce would tell you that he. Um, uh, like the practices better than the early games and and when you have those lineups that uh, uh, you know are you know eight or nine veterans playing it, it sometimes uh, you know looks a little disjointed I think he felt really strongly that the practices were good I think the energy has been really good I, I've been uh, you know really encouraged just by the interaction with uh, with the players watching them around I think they're you know they're uh, they're full of energy I think they're really excited about uh, uh, the season, so that part uh, has been good, and you know whether we hit a flat spot at some point where uh, you might not have otherwise in December, January, whatever. I guess uh, I guess time will tell. But you know the one thing uh, about our team last year, uh, we were ready to play most nights, and we uh, we found a way to win uh, on a lot of those nights. So you know credit to uh, Bruce and his staff for having guys ready. But again, uh, I think he'd be the first to also give credit to the leadership of the team and and uh you know the the makeup of our dressing room so it'll be uh it'll be fun i i uh i think the other thing with uh, camp uh in my opinion uh there's not going to be a lot of change to uh what you would have expected our team uh to look like when we return everybody and i and i think that's a good thing sometimes you like to have a little bit of roster churn but i think when you uh you know come off a championship season that the you know the more that you can keep that core together the uh, the more advantageous uh, that that is. So that'll be good. And then for Bruce this year, I think he got a better chance to get a handle on, uh, you know, people that might be call-ups in our organization. And last year he comes in, he's still getting to know the NHL players. You try to get a handle on the American Hockey League players or the good uh, young juniors that are uh, that are part of uh, training camp this year. I think he you know, probably has a little more clarity on you know what the the Henderson players looked like that were part of the preseason and and uh, you know that's good for uh, good for us and is good for those players. I know when we uh, did some of our exit meetings with players going down to Henderson that uh, he sat in or players going back to junior. I think that's really important for uh, for young players. Kelly, thanks for this. We know it's a busy day. Start of this new season tomorrow. Thanks for a few minutes. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Sorry for uh, being late. Oh, good. Uh, you Anytime. You're busier than us. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Kelly McCrimmon, general manager of the Stanley Cup champs, joining us. His team will raise the banner tomorrow night at the Fortress. Don't want to miss it. The guys will have it covered for you on radio. We'll have a special one-hour pregame show from 6 to 7 as well on Scripps Sports. That'll do it for us. Dave and Shane with you from our studios in downtown Summerlin on Fox Sports Las Vegas.